Hey, uh, this is Stan from TabDT, and I'm quite excited today to be kicking off like a series of videos on planning, uh, and especially to explain how we do outcome-driven roadmaps at TabDT. So I just want to spend two minutes to explain what's, why it's important, and I actually find a pretty good tweet today that uh, captures a problem. So here Patrick says, when I was a product manager, my boss at the time pulled me aside and asked, what has the team shipped in the last six months have made an impact? And this question here, that's exactly um, the thing that I want to talk about, right? So I've been part of teams. I was a product manager myself and I've been, you know, there's a lot of value in roadmap meetings where you talk about the dependencies, uh, you try to identify blockers and, and uh, figure out, you know, implementation details. But really, the conversation should start at, you know, why we have those things on the roadmap to begin with. And um, it's really important for teams to focus the conversation on the outcomes they want to have rather than, you know, debate for hours how they're going to build something. So to start um, today, what I want to talk about is like, you know, the things that come at the start, which is like, what's your big plan? And it's really about like shaping your journey for the next 10 years. Obviously, it's a document that is going to be um, living and that you need to keep, um, that you need to update. But today, what I want to see is like how you can build such a document in a simple way. Um, so it's going to be really practical. Um, hopefully, you know, you can watch this video in a couple of minutes and then um, take uh, whatever you saw today and then apply it into your company. Okay, so let me start with why you want a big plan. And to explain that, like I like to think about um, how, you know, how do we think about the future and how do we plan things um, like more like set, you know, the, the, the new set of KPIs, new set of priorities um, when we work with a team. And to do that, I want to talk about two different mindsets that you can have. So the first mindset is to think about what you can be. And the second mindset is to think about what you should be instead. So I'll illustrate that with a simple, simple graph here. So in a can, uh, what you can be mindset, what you have is you have a metric and a timeline and you're looking at, you know, the growth that you had so far and you're going to take that growth and extrapolate, you know, like think about what you can, it, can we improve on that? Right? So you talk to a team and you say, Hey, if we optimize some things, uh, could we accelerate things a little bit? And usually the answer is always yes. Uh, and then you're gonna come up with a goal that looks like this, right? So this is if we do 30% more, etc., then we tend to grow like this. So this works and it absolutely will help you uh, year after year after year, quarter after quarter um, to redefine you know, new targets and, and new set of priorities, new set of goals. But I think this is dangerous because it doesn't really um, this is a model that does not ask tough questions. In the what you should be model, you take a different approach, right? So you start the same way, but rather than looking at the past, what you ask is, where do we want to go? So what do we need to be as a business considering our ambition? And this is going to set a North Star in the future. And usually that North Star is way higher than what you would have if you did um, just, you know, an incremental improvement, you know, it's like 30% improvement on what you've achieved so far. Uh, and so you get the North Star, and then you're going to compare it with what you thought, you know, you could do with the existing team and, and if you optimize things. And this is where you start to ask yourself really tough questions. But I think those questions are important for every business. So do we have the right people? Do we need to change the team? Uh, do we need to raise some money? Do we need to join an accelerator? Um, and even like a tougher one, right? So imagine uh, you've been burning a lot of cash and then an incremental improvement would not have given you to that profitability that you need. Do you need to stop? And this is for me um, a much more powerful way to think about your growth and think about disrupting yourself as a company. And, and it will help you make better decision faster, uh, better decisions faster, sorry. All right, so... You know, what you can be model, really you focus on the past and you look at your existing um, team, you look at your strength that you have today, and then you, you iterate on that, right? So you say, this is where I am today, and I think I can do a little bit more. Uh, 
And I think that the what you should be model is really about, it's much more interesting because it considers where you are today, but it looks at the future. It looks at where you need to be. And then it's about like explaining that gap and understanding if you can fill the gap in a good way. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into the details of you know how you create such a plan. And so there's really uh, three elements to the plan. So where do you need to be in the ten in ten years? And this is going to be just a simple, you know, how many customers do you want to have? And we're gonna keep it simple because there's no need to detail things much more than that. But just even thinking about the number of customers, uh, you can start to have really interesting conversation with your team. Uh, for instance, if you're in a B2C, um, if you're a B2C company, do you want to have, you know, it's like millions of customers or do you want to address a niche market? Um, if you're in B2B, do you want to sell um, something, you know, cheap to uh, a lot of companies or do you want to sell something really expensive to uh, a couple hundred companies? Now, so 10 years is about uh, setting your ambition. Then you're going to go a third of a way and say, all right, so we understand how many customers, what kind of company like at a high, high, high level we want to be. Now let's go back to uh, three years from now and we're going to shape what that company looks like. And we're going to use a set of KPIs, um, which are um, customers, but also revenues, size of a team and what your engagement metric is. And I'll talk about it after. And then, you take that three years uh, picture and then you get to that one year, um, you, you look at where you need to be in 12 months. And I like to call that the freak out stage because going from like that three years thing, like whenever I do that three year plan, like it still looks realistic. And then the one year one, I'm like, oh my God, like we need to do so much. And this is where you start to have all these tough questions and discussion and you, need to, and you challenge yourself. Um, so one year, freak out about your budgets. And then uh, that PFM here, but I, I'll talk about it in the next, oops, sorry, I'm trying to find my mouse, it's here. Um, so the PFM here is just a plan that explains in more details what you're gonna do the next 12 months and PFM stands for um, purpose. So what's a purpose as a company, F for focus areas and M for measures of success. So how, how, um, how will you know you're successful? Okay, so now let me jump into um, a concrete example. Uh, concrete. I'm in a fake company. Um, so the company is called Askawoof. Um, they do NPS as a service today. They've been around for like maybe 12, 18 months. And now they're thinking about that big plan. It's like, we have a product, it's used by people, we have some customers, but where do we want to be? Right? And so they start with a purpose. And for, for them, the purpose is to help every company to excel at products. So they want to help every team to be able to create great products thanks to the feedback they get. So they do this um, um, big plan thing. And so when they thought about, you know, the 10 big 10 years goal, um, what if they realized, okay, you know, we don't want to do like a, a big, you know, have a big sales team and be a sales driven company. Uh, we want to be more product led. We want to have a lot of customers. And we're going to be uh, quite affordable. So they set themselves a goal of having 20,000 customers, which seems pretty big already, right? So that's a, the goal for year for them in the next 10 years. And now if I bring it back to what it looks like in three years. So shape, shape that house, right? And so in terms of customers, so a third of a way, they want to get to 20K, you know, they're kind of like thinking they did this thing where like, oh, we need to like do that exponential growth. So I thought, okay, so in three years, we want to crack that 1,000 customer uh, mark of that 1 million AR at the end of the year. Um, I think it would be good if we had like maybe 10 people on the team. Like today, it's just like like two guys in a room. And then that engagement metric that I talked about, this is going to be important because it's, um, if you think about your product and what provides value to the product, it's like, What's that metric that helps you understand that people are getting value out of your tool? And for this team, because they do NPS as a, as a service, they're thinking, um, well, we're going to track how many pieces of feedback people get every week, right? And for them, they want to get to that 30K, uh, 30,000 pieces of feedback that are collected or, or um, gathered every week by, by, by companies. And 
here, an interesting question is like, why do we not put this engagement metric in the 10 years goal? And for me, it's because really, if you want to get forces to 20,000 customers, it's not sure that pieces of feedback is going to be enough to get there. Maybe they'll need other things that are going to help companies to excel at product. And so maybe they'll need other tools that will have different engagement metrics. And, um, and it's important to not lock your thinking, you know, to restrict your thinking too early by putting um, something in the 10 years goal, which is an engagement metric, which is going to restrict your thinking to what you are today. So today their NPS tool makes sense for them to think about how much, how this NPS tool need to grow in the next three years. Um, but it doesn't make sense to keep that thinking going further than that. And now the freak out stage. So you want to have a thousand customers in three years and you want to make a million dollar uh, by the end of the three years, like in AR. So it's MR like a little bit different. Um, but so what does it look like now in 12 months? And this is where I freak out and we're like, okay, we need to get to this 200 customers. Um, revenue needs to be at 120K AR. Um, and we want to grow a team by another two people. All right, so it takes a lot of time to get a discussion right. Uh, you'll have to do your models. You'll have to think about what's possible. You have to look at your budget and how much you can spend, etc. cetera. Um, and the engagement metric as well. Um, so they need to grow that engagement metric to 4K weekly piece of feed, 4,000 weekly pieces of feedback uh, per week. Okay, so this is how you make a big plan. Um, this is an exercise that is extremely valuable to do as a team. Um, maybe not if you're just getting started because you're still figuring out, you know, what kind of uh, business you're trying to have. But as soon as you start, you know, you start having your first uh, few customers and, and you have something that is stable and you know what kind of direction you're taking, I would recommend to prepare a big plan. And you can review that big plan, you know, every six months, um, every quarter, if you want. Um, but this, here, the, the one year picture, it will then help you shape um, that, you know, 12 months focus, um, focus plan. And so the PFM, I kind of like uh, did a quick one here to give an idea of what will be in there. So you basically uh, take back the purpose that you have as a company. So to help every company to excel at product. And then you look at this, right? So 200 customers, 120K AR, a team of four and um, 4K weekly pieces of feedback. And you look at, so you look at this goal and you try to look at your product and understand where do we need to focus our energy to get to that. And so for this company, what they figured out is that they need to focus on expanding usage. So launch more types of survey to increase the number of feedback, pieces of feedback uh, received by people every week. We need to focus on landing more customers. Um, and so this is like growth piece. And also um, to accelerate the aha moment so that when we land new leads, uh, they can convert faster. So it's really about taking those KPIs and then looking at your product and your company and figure out like for the next 12 months, where do we need to focus our effort to be able to get those results, right? And so some uh, in the success metric, you're going to find, you know, some of those things. But the idea is also to help you have success metrics that are much more specific to the focus areas that you identify. Okay, so I'll jump back to my keynote and what's my last screen? Um, yeah, so tomorrow I'll dive into the PFM. Um, this was a little, little bit long as an introduction, um, but if you do have any question, you can send me an email at standardtability.io. Um, you can also find me uh, on Twitter at StanPita and if you have any question, uh, and we do have a product. Um, I'll talk about it in you know probably a week or something. But really, I want to focus the discussion right now on um, what you can do with just a piece of paper uh, or Google Doc uh, to help you understand what you want to be as a company and um, what you need to focus on. All right. See you.